bless the name of the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. This is our call to worship. Welcome this morning to this, our Vandeveer Park United Methodist Church worship experience. We are glad that the Lord has seen fit to bring you to this place at this time on this morning. Won't you pray with me? Oh Lord our God, we reverence your holy name in this place. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. We praise you with all that is within us this morning. We extol you, O oh God. We give you honor and glory. We thank you for last night's lying down on for this morning's early rising. We thank you even for the rain coming down on the outside. And we thank you, O oh God, for that which will spring forth from your watering on this day. God, we praise you for the victories this past week. God, we praise you even for in the midst of our trials and tribulations, you have always been an ever-present help in the time of storm and struggle. God, we bless you in this place. Now, oh God, as we worship and adore you, as we bow down before you, oh God, as we lift up holy hands and lift up our voices in praise. Have thine own way in our homes, on our jobs, in our relationships, in our churches, as we go from here to there, wherever we may be, oh God, in the hospitals, in the prisons. God, be with us. Allow your spirit to rest as we lift your name on high. Have your name, have your way in this worship experience. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
so much, Sister Shawnee. And please join me for this week's announcements. Please do not forget on Monday morning, our Monday morning men's manor prayer line that meets at seven o'clock from seven o'clock a.m. until 7.30. The call-in number is 1-605-475-4800. Again, the call-in number is 1-605-475-4800. The access code is 1032590. Again, the access code is 1032590. Our Wednesday morning prayer line takes place at 6:30 a.m. That call-in number is 5156049900. Again, that number is 515-604-9936, and the access code is 389959. Again, the access code is 389959. Now, we know that this is April and it's almost at an end, so that means that Mother's Day is not far away. So we will be doing a special Mother's Day pictorial tribute, and we would like for you to send in the pictures of your mother, you with your mother, your grandmother, or the women that you want to celebrate on Mother's Day. Now, those pictures must be submitted electronically to the following email address. And that email address is v p u m c media at gmail.com. Again, that is v p u m c media at gmail.com. And all pictures must be submitted no later than Monday, May 3rd at 5 o'clock p.m so that they can be included in the pictorial tribute. Now, all of this information will be sent out later on today via our Vanderveer Park e-news. And if you're not receiving the emails from the church, please contact the church office during normal business hours, Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. and inform the church administrator that you would like to add your email address to that list. Now, last week I told you about the Campaign of Hope Adopt an Envelope campaign that we officially kicked off last week. Well, I am back again this week to tell you that, first of all, I want to say that we are so grateful for those of you that have donated to the campaign. Your faithful giving has gotten us off to an amazing start. In just one week, we have raised over $3,200. Can we get an amen, somebody? Amen. So what I'm asking you to do is to keep that momentum going. And if you do, that by the end of this campaign, by the time the campaign ends on June 30th, that we, have, we will have reached our goal. Now, I'm going to tell you about the campaign again. For those of you that have, may not have heard it, you should have received an email or a, hard, a letter via um, snail mail about it. So we are trying to raise, well, we are not trying to because I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. We are going to raise $31,375 or more by June 30th. And our Adopt the Envelope campaign is we have 250 envelopes that each number corresponds to that dollar amount from one to 250. So we're asking you to select an envelope with whatever number you choose, and then you can send that into the church. You can either mail it in, you can go on our website and give there, or you can do it electronically um, via our electronic giving. So, again, 
we are asking that you would select an envelope and you don't have to do it by yourself because we have some small numbers of course they start out at one and they go all the way to 250 but if you want to get together with your friends if you want to host an outside fundraiser or if you want to get together with your family or a group of people and all of you can Choose a large number. How about 247? Choose that number, put all your dollars in the envelope, and send it on in, or do it electronically. But whatever amount you decide to give, we will appreciate it, we will receive it lovingly, and we will thank you and thank God for your faithful giving. Amen? So continue to give to the campaign. If you have any questions about the campaign, you can always call the church office to have your questions answered, and we thank you again, and this concludes this morning's announcements. Amen. And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely?
and I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm I'm free God's time is so just give God some praise wherever you may be hallelujah that our God will watch over us and see about us amen it's time to give church family it is now time to give won't you join me now for our giving declaration repeat after me I am a benevolent believer. Therefore, I am a grateful and cheerful giver. I sow into this church because I believe in the vision and ministry of this church. Because I am a tither, I am not a beggar or a borrower, but a lender. I expect the windows of heaven to pour out blessings too big for me to contain. And God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Therefore, I will share my blessings with my family, my neighbors, and the world. Father, we thank you now for both gift and forgiver. We pray now that you will bless them all and increase them, that may, they may be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And before I bring the word of God to you this morning in the scripture, just remember that you can text V-P-U-M-C-G-I-V-E to 77977. Again, that is text V-P-U-M-C-G-I-V-E to 77977. Amen? And now, our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verse 32 and 33. And it reads, Remember Lot's wife. 
Those who try to make their life secure will lose it, but those who lose their life will keep it. Here ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. My heart 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our church declaration. We declare this church to, to be a church that welcomes the Holy Spirit enthusiastically, embraces holiness totally, believes the Bible conclusively, worships the Lord exclusively, and loves one another exhaustively. Amen. This morning, as you may have already heard, I'm going to just reread our scripture that comes to us from the gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter. And it begins at the 32nd verse. And it reads, remember Lot's wife? <laughs> Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. And whoever loves their life, loses their life, will preserve it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I'm going to ask that you all would pray with me for the next few moments, short moments, that are ours this morning on a sermon entitled, Necessary Endings. Necessary Endings endings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come saying thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that endures from generation to generation. Thank you, O oh God, for using me now for your glory. Hide me behind the cross that the word may come forth. None of me and all of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Necessary endings. This morning, church family, I have before me my cell phone, my cell phone. And if we're honest, the cell phone has become one of the very most important in everyday items in our lives. Amen. We use our cell phones for just about everything we do. Making phone calls text messaging when we can't call, gathering information from Google, let me go and Google it, getting directions, ordering a cab or ordering some food, listening to music or tracking our steps. We use it to pay our bills and to play some games. We use it to watch movies and to take pictures. And my personal favorite, Sister Gail, is we use our cell phones sometimes to order items off of Amazon. Amen. Amen. However, we use these devices. If we are honest with ourselves, many of us would be ashamed to say it. But it is a fact that we have replaced our cell phones with the American, we, had, uh, we have uh, replaced the American Express card with our cell phones and we can't leave home without it. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody under the sound of my voice is watching this service on their cell phone. Somebody under the sound of my voice just sometime this week found yourself walking out the house and said, Oops, let me run back inside. Let me get my mask and my cell phone. Is there a witness in the room, in the building, on the internet? We have found ourselves running back. We don't just run back for our cell phone, but we run back if we know we're going to be out for a while with our, for our charger or for that extra battery. Amen? Amen. But can I be honest with you this morning, church family? As of late... I have been having some issues, some challenges with my cell phone. And let me just say here for those that may be listening, because I know you're in the house, whether you are an iPhone enthusiast mm -hmm, or you have an allegiance to your Android, regardless of where you find yourself, 
12. All of us can attest to the fact that we have had some challenges from time to time with our cell phone. Amen. Amen. And, and just for the record, I am an Android user. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was just for all you iPhone people that need deliverance. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, for me, I have had my phone for years. This particular phone, I've had it for years now. And if you take a look at it, the case that I got when I first got it is still the case that I had when I first got it. It is tattered, bruised, messed up, fading in so many different areas. And I have been eligible for an upgrade for over a year. I'm ashamed to say it. And some of you may be saying, wow, but I know that I am not alone. Amen. Funny thing is, as much as I need an upgrade, I am resistant to the upgrade. <laughs> I mean, my cell phone has some amazing pictures in it. Some very valuable information is stored in this cell phone. I am able to maneuver the cell phone, uh, knowing how to maneuver it and do the things that I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. I know how to snooze it when I need a couple few a few extra minutes to sleep. I, I know how to turn down the volume when I feel like it's going to ring or put it on mute. I know my way around my cell phone. And I don't necessarily um, have to be perfect when using this cell phone. Why? Because the autocorrect kind of anticipates what I'm about to text when I'm about to text somebody and tell somebody somebody something it kind of finishes my sentences for me isn't it a great relationship when you can have somebody who can finish your sentences for you that's my cell phone and every now and then though I will get a message that reminds me that I am eligible for an upgrade that reminder will come to give me a glimpse of the new and improved version of my phone. Yeah, it'll come and say, you get more memory. <laughs> it'll come and say, you get a better charge, a better life in your battery. It'll tell me that it even will move faster, faster speed. Uh, it'll improve the features that I've fallen in love with. And to boot, it will be sleeker and look better when I pull it out. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's tempting, the design and everything. It is tempting, church family. I mean, I'm tempted to go ahead and get this upgrade, but yet for over a year. I have not been able to get this upgrade. I have been reluctant to get this upgrade. Reality is that somebody over the, under the sound of my voice is asking, well, why are you so reluctant? Well, I got to tell the truth that my desire to stay comfortable in my dysfunction, my God, is greater than my desire to improve or change. Let me just say that one more time. My desire to be comfortable, be able to navigate my way around things, and I'm able to do it even in spite of its dysfunction. Uh, just last night, I found myself erasing so that I would have room <laughs> to take more. <laughs> I found myself navigating my way around the dysfunction even though I knew that I was eligible for an upgrade. But lest you sit on your seat of judgment and start to look at me and say, well, what's wrong with you? Let us turn the mirror not on me but on you. And look at what you've been struggling with letting go of. What have 
you've been struggling uh, to, to release from your life? Is it the way of life that you live? Is it a, a person in your life? Is it a place? Is it a thing? Is it a habit? Is it a way of thinking? What have you been comfortable with? What dysfunction have you been comfortable with? You have not been willing to release it. Not able to let it go in spite of the challenges and issues you face. Because you have amazing memories. You are able to do what you want to do whenever you want to do it without accountability. And even when you are wrong, it makes good of your mistakes and your mess, my God. And while you have had a glimpse of what your life could look like and what your life ought to be and what your life could be, you make excuses and remain comfortable right there in the place you are. Are when we are not able to release these things, we have now become, I dare say it, stuck because we consistently want to have access to the memories and the methods that don't necessarily serve us or our purpose. It's been said that the biggest enemy of our future success is arrogance indifference and unwillingness to learn, unlearn, relearn, change and grow. And if we truly are willing to tell the truth and shame the devil today, if we are truly willing to put away the perfect picture of our lives and the reasons why we are not where we ought to be, the reasons why many of our lives are stuck, the reasons why God can't trust us with some things is because of the fact that we are arrogant and we have indifference and we are unwilling to learn, to unlearn, to relearn learn to change and to grow in the midst of all of this said Lord help me not just to help me but to help somebody else and so the Lord led me to the gospel of Luke the 17th chapter the 32nd and 33rd verses where we hear these words remember Lot's wife he said, whosoever tries to keep their life will lose it. And whosoever loses their life will preserve it. Well, in the text, Jesus is speaking to his disciples about a coming time of great calamity and destruction. And Jesus makes mention, he reminds them of Lot's wife and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The story is told in the book of Genesis that as Lot's wife, he, Lot and his wife and their daughters, as they were escaping the wrath of God in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were instructed by the angels of God to flee the country lest they all perish in that land. But they were also informed that they should not, they ought not look back. But the text lets us know that Lot's wife looked back. Now understand, she perished as a result of her disobedience. She perished not because of a glance over the shoulder. No, 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 don't, don't be fooled. It, it wasn't a glance over the shoulder. It was a look of longing. It was a look of a longing for the things of old. It was the reluctance of her reluctance to leave the things that had happened before. It was her desire to return to the ways things used to be. Yeah, it wasn't a glance. She did not want to let go of the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she wanted to hold on to the little memories. 
She, she didn't want to throw it away. And so despite the instruction from the man of God, she looked back. In her, her inability to let go, it cost her her life. Who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to today? Your inability to let go is costing you your life. My God. And to this day, her story is used and she is recognized as a symbol of rebellious believers. Excuse me, rebellious unbelievers. But my brothers and my sisters, let me just ask you today, what is it in your life that you are unable to let go of? What are you looking back at, not with a glance, but with desire, with longing, with, with a hunger and a thirsting to go back for? Today, I encourage you and I tell you, don't look back. I tell you, don't look back at the things of long ago. There are some things in our lives that must come to an end. I am reminded of a man who is awakened in the midnight hour, in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, Brother Raymond, he's awakened in the middle of his sleep. He's in his home. And he realizes, friend, that his house is on fire. Can you imagine being in your bed, resting, just rolling over, and all of a sudden you see that your house is on fire? Well, this man, he is tempted now to run around and gather up all of his valuables. He's tempted now to get the wonderful picture of his mother on the wall. He's, he's, he's tempted to go and get his golden watch. He's tempted to go get his Gucci shoes. He's tempted to go and get all of his valuables. But then he knows that the delay to go and get these things can prevent his escape. And if he stays in the house gathering memories and valuables, that, that, that he may not just lose the valuables, he will not just lose the memories, but he could very well lose his very life. My mother always says, Keisha, what don't cost life don't cost nothing. Yes, and she says it like that, nothing. Some things, in some situations, my brothers and sisters, have necessary endings. I'm almost closing because there is a necessary ending in sight. In this season, God is calling us to have faith for our future. I close with this quote today from the book that I was introduced to some years ago entitled, Yes, Necessary Endings by Henry Cloud. And it says, getting to the next level always requires ending something, leaving behind and moving on. Growth itself demands that we move on. Without the ability to end things, people stay stuck, never becoming who they are meant to be, never accomplishing all that their talents and abilities should afford them. My Vanderveer Park family, remember Lot's wife. I encourage you today, don't look back. Don't be stuck. Make that move because some things that God is calling us to can never happen unless we are willing to walk away and embrace some necessary endings. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost, let the children of God say,
Amen. If you had heard this message today, and yes, I am going to go ahead and get a new phone. I am going to go ahead and uh, embrace the necessary ending <laughs> and pray that only the necessary names, numbers, pictures, and items that need to be transferred will come and I will leave some things behind. But for you, my brother, my sister, watching today, the Spirit of God began to speak to you personally about some things in your life that God is telling you, I can't give you this if you're not willing to let go of that. I can't bring you here unless you're willing to walk away from there. And when you walk away from there, God says, don't look back. Because what you look back on and what you try to hold on to could be the very thing that will deplete, deplete you of your life, your joy, your hope, and your legacy. But I have good news today. The God we serve is with us in our decision making. So even as you transition, God says, I'm with you. So if you don't know the God that I speak of, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin today, if you don't know him as way maker, miracle, miracle maker, if you don't know him as the one who suffered, bled, and died for your sins, and on the third day arose from the dead, if you don't know him and the pardon of your sin, my brother, my sister, this is your opportunity. Just invite him into your heart today. Invite him into your life today. Surrender your life to him today. Won't you pray with me? Our Father and our God, we say thank you. Thank you, oh God. That you don't leave us in our stuck places. You don't leave us in our dysfunction. You don't leave us in our brokenness. But God, you put on flesh one day and you sent your son to die for us. That we would have right to the tree of life and not just any life, but life more abundant abundantly for the brother the sister the man the woman the boy the girl under the sound of my voice that has invited you into their heart for the very first time father we pray now that you would do a new thing in them that you will renovate and you will repair and that you will renew and you will restore and you will 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 revive oh god Five and restore their lives so that they may live out a life pleasing unto you. And God, for the one who today, 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 today is making a decision to let go of their cell phone and take the upgrade. We pray that you prepare them for mind-blowing experiences, for mind-blowing and eye-opening life more abundantly. God, we thank you for an overflow of your blessings as we walk into a new place, a new season, a new restoration, a new pouring into our cup, oh God. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we thank you this morning for joining us in this worship experience. 
we prayed that something was said, something was done, something was shared, a song sung, a word spoken that has blessed your very life at the core. And know that the rest of your days are going to be the best of your days. For God has given us faith in our future, even as we embrace necessary endings. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne, be all majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let the children of God say, Amen. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. And may your battles end the way they should. And may God is good. See, let your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show. 